Hey everyone, welcome back to InfoGamer. We're gonna get back into creating our snake game. Now in our previous lesson, we showed you how to create the interaction between our snake and the food. And so that when our snake collides with the food, it grows one size bigger and the food gets respawned in a new location. Now in this video, we're going to create the game over sequence and this happens when the snake collides with itself. And so there's a few things that we need to do. Now in a previous video, we set the scale of our food to be a little bit smaller, but what will work a little bit better is if we reset the collider to be a bit smaller instead of the food. So let's go to our food prefab, click on that, and you'll see that we have our scale at 0 .0, uh, 0.95. We're going to change it back to 1, and then on the collider, we're going to change that to 0.95. And we're also going to do this on the snake prefab. Once you've done that, let's go ahead and open our game controller script in Visual Studios. So now that we have it open in Visual Studios, we're going to scroll down to our hit function that we created in our last lesson and we want to add another if statement for if the message that is sent when our snake collides with something is a snake. So we'll say if what is, or if what was sent equals, and then in quotes we'll put snake because that's the tag of our snake. And so if our snake collides with another snake, then we'll receive this message and this is where we want to execute the game over code. So the first thing that we need to do inside this if statement to execute our game over is to cancel our invoke repeating. And so that is cancel invoke and in parentheses we and in quotes we type the name of our invoke function which we have up here at the top timer invoke. I'm just going to copy that and paste it right into the quotes. Once you've done that, then we need to create a new exit function. Now this exit function will be called when we have a game over, but it'll also be called when we just click the exit button. So it'll be a good thing to create a separate function so that we can call it when we click the exit button. So this is going to be a public function so that we can later apply it to a UI button and it'll be a void and we'll just call it exit. In parentheses we don't have any parameters and inside the body we are going to load a new scene. But in order to do this we need to add a new namespace up at the top so we'll go ahead and scroll up and then right here below using system.collections we're going to add using Unity, oops, Unity Engine dot scene management. Once you have that, we'll scroll back down to our exit function and we'll type scene manager dot load scene and then we'll give it a zero because zero is going to be the index for our main menu and one, whoops, one is going to be the index for our game scene. Now the last thing that we need to do is call this exit function in our hit function inside the if statement for when we run into a snake. So after our cancel invoke, we're going to type exit and then parentheses and a semicolon. Now let's go ahead and save this and we'll test it out, see how it works. So before we test this, we need to create our new main menu and assign the order of our scenes in the build settings. So to do this, let's first go ahead and save our scene. And then let's create a new scene. Actually, I'm just going to resave this scene as our new main menu scene. And then in a later video, we'll show you how to change it so that it looks like a main menu. So let's go to scenes and we'll create a main menu, main menu. 
So let's go ahead and load our main menu scene and we're going to make one slight change to it and so that you know that it is our main menu. We're going to select our main menu then we're going to delete our snake from the scene and that way there won't be a snake and let's let's create one text element just so that we know it's the main menu. So we'll create a text, we'll call it the title, and we'll type snake into the text field, snake, and let's anchor it to all sides, and then change the transforms to zero, and we'll change the color to white so that it's more visible, and let's hit best fit so it's a little bit bigger. So the there we have snake up at the top left corner. Later, when we create the main menu, we'll show you how to make it pretty. Um, but right now, this is just to show you that it definitely loads a new scene. So let's go back to our game scene, and we'll hit save for the main menu. So now the last thing that we need to do is assign these scenes into our build settings. So we'll go file, build settings, Right now we don't have any scenes, so let's first drag in our main menu scene, and then let's drag in our game scene. Now let's go ahead and test it and see if we can load the main menu scene. So if I pick up this food and that food, and then I run into myself, sit down, left, up, it loaded the snake scene. And it spawned a food because we still have the game controller script. So to fix this, we'll go back to our main menu scene and we'll just get rid of our game controller script because we don't need it in our main menu. We're going to create a new script for our main menu that will be our main menu controller and that will control like when we click the play button or when we change our speed settings and stuff like that. So that concludes this video on how to create the interaction between the snake and itself, making it so that when your snake collides with itself, it creates a game over. So hope you enjoyed this. Make sure that you like and subscribe and share with your friends, and we'll see you next time.